Today on the show, it's a new standard year, and we have fired our propagandist. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here, you. Let's talk about where <laughs> we've been and where this highliner of a podcast is headed. Hopefully somewhere. I don't... I'm not high. Do we are have you a high? Destination? Are we? Holy shit. Are we flying this sober? <laughs> oh, that is a bad thing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Did you forget the spice on Gamont? Oh god, I left the baggie of spice on Gamont. God damn it! <laughs> Welcome to Gom Jabbar, your guide to the iconic world of Dune. We'll be exploring the themes, philosophies, and characters found in the sandy depths of this vast universe, from Frank Herbert's groundbreaking novels to the adaptations on film and TV. My name is Leo. And my name's Abu. Oh, and Happy New Year, everyone! Happy hey! New Year <laughs> 2024! A... Oh, we somehow survived. Can't wait for this year ahead of us. Yeah. There's a lot happening this year. <laughs> so much in the world of Dune and so much in the world of the world. That's right. That's right. But whether you are a new listener, relatively recent listener, or you've been with us since the very first episodes, mm. we wanted to take a moment. We wanted to reflect a little bit on where we've been. We want to talk about where we're going. Yes. Because, Abu, we've been producing this podcast for almost four years. Oh, say it ain't so. It's just a couple of months off of four years. That's incredible. Yeah. Wow. It certainly doesn't feel like almost four years, but that is the point we're at. Yeah. And over that time, we have had such great and lovely interactions with our listeners. So many of you have reached out to us in various ways, emails, DMs, pigeons. <laughs> smoke signals. Smoke signals. Many of you have reached out to us about Dune, of course. That is what we do here, after all, just to geek out about Dune with us, to share your theories, to share adorable pictures of your pets, which we have appreciated. But also, a lot of you have asked us about the show itself, about Gam Jabbar, the podcast itself. The truth is, this year we want to try and be quite a bit more transparent about the podcast yeah. itself. Yeah. especially about the production behind the scenes that a lot of folks may not know about or never even see. And in particular, we want to invite some of our supporters a little bit behind the curtain and maybe let you get your grubby little paws inside <laughs> the Gamjabar pie. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm mixing up analogies there, but you, <laughs> metaphors, but you, know, you get the idea. Yeah, get your paws in that pie, grubby <laughs> little listener. <laughs> so, okay, so uh, on today's quote-unquote State of the Imperium episode, we are going to do just that. We're, we're kind of going to throw open the curtain, and if you have ever wondered in your almost four years of listening to us, or just four days of listening to us, if you've wondered how the Gam Jabbar Slig sausage gets made, baby... Mm. Yeah. We're about to tell you. We're about to spill all of Grandma's secret recipe. <laughs> Grandma loved Slig. That was her <laughs> favorite dish. Yeah, and for those of you who are like, oh, I don't care. Get back to talking about Dune. We will. Yeah, we'll be back to our regular programming. We will. And hey, without further ado, let's get right into it. No ad breaks today, baby. Hey, We're just true. talking right through this. <laughs> We're going to make less money on this episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to start... Let's talk a little bit about the team behind Gam Jabbar. Yeah. Now, Gam Jabbar, the podcast, is primarily produced by the two of us. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. So the two of us, we research, we uh -huh. write, record, edit, publish, promote every single episode of the show every single week. Yeah. Our grubby little pause <laughs> have been all over every episode that you have ever listened to of this show. Yeah. In addition to that, we also handle a lot of the behind the scenes admin work that is necessary to just keep the gears turning in a production like this. So we're out here responding to emails, both from listeners and from potential sponsors and guests. We're out here scheduling collaborations with those said guests. We are negotiating contracts and deals with sponsors when those come in every now and then. And of course, we're doing stuff like creating social content and promotional content that goes out on places like TikTok, YouTube, Patreon, et cetera, et cetera, Twitter, all that good stuff. Right, right. 
Now, last year, frankly, like truthfully speaking, after months of being overwhelmed by the workload, we decided to hire a freelance editor to help take on some of the editing work of the podcast, which is some of the most tedious and takes up some of the most time. And we do want to give a huge shout out to Jeff Moonen, who has been that freelance editor for us these past few months. He has been a tremendous help, and it has certainly helped us continue to make sure that we can maintain the output and the quality that we want on the show. Yeah. Now, besides that, we also get support from a mysterious money man named Alan, (laughs) who manages all of the finances of the larger Lore Party podcast network. So we are part of a larger network of shows, and Alan manages the money for the whole network. So thus, he manages the money for Gamjabar as well. And that's it. It's me, Leo, Jeff working on edits for us, and Alan making sure that bills get paid on time. Just four people make the show every single week. Yeah. Well, let's talk about how we make an episode. Yes. What you might not realize, because Abu and I, frankly, I think part of why we enjoy hosting this show together is that we do have sort of a fun, I like that your energy and the way you're able to pick up jokes and and (laughs) we're able to keep it pretty conversational. Yeah. So all of that preamble is to hit you with the fact we actually do script every episode. (laughs) Yep. Like very exhaustively. In fact, yep. right now I'm reading a bullet point. Let me read it actually word for word. Yeah, word for word. Step one, colon. Something that a lot of folks might not know is that we script every episode. That part's in bold. Comma. And that's where every single idea takes life. There yep. you go. An example of a bullet point <laughs> on one of our scripts. Yeah. And genuinely, this is where a lot of the work goes in. Like yeah. if a script is bad, the episode's probably going to be bad. When mm-hmm, you listen to mm-hmm. an episode of a show and it seems kind of meandering, if it seems like it doesn't have a good idea, a good thesis, probably no they script. either they either didn't have a script at all or they did have a script, but the script already had those problems present, Correct. right? Correct. It's just like a movie. Bad script, not going to be a great movie. Uh-huh. So we treat the scripts with pretty much as high a bar of standards as possible. Right. As if they were themselves going to be published and publicly visible. So we fact check everything. We uh, find reliable sources for everything that we say. And when we're researching, we really uh, steer clear of things like just a quick Google search or a quick Wikipedia. We try to find primary sources, right? We try to find books. We try to find the original author's words. That's why I bought a multiple hundreds of dollars worth physical copy of the dune encyclopedia because frankly yeah. i didn't trust the pdf mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. how that's how rigorous we are with these things and we try to find multiple corroborating sources when possible if we're talking about something yeah absolutely so this first step is tremendously important uh, we know that this is part of what allows us to be above other podcasts that might have a little bit more of the meandering, not really getting to any kind of point. Right. But because of that, the script takes a lot of work. A typical script for Gamjabar takes between four and eight hours of work. And then once we're at a place where the script is tight, it's it's fun, it's got character, it's accurate, mm-hmm. we're ready for step two. <laughs> That's right. Step one completed. Check that off the to-do list. Step two is a little bit more straightforward, though. We sit down and we record the episode. Yeah. We have the script in front of us. We pull up a tool called Riverside that records our audio and video that we can edit later. And we have the conversation. We record the episode. We do it remotely in case folks thought we were like sitting face to face. We have actually only ever made this podcast remotely. I don't think we've ever sat together in a room and recorded a Gamjabar episode. The closest we got was right after seeing the early screening of Dune. That's we were right. outside and we, we outside. Uh, recorded. Right that. outside the theater. That might have been the only time we've ever recorded <laughs> yeah. it in person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just on our phones, you know? It was just a quick and dirty <laughs> right outside the theater. And actually, speaking of the Dune movie, I do have a little fun fact about that. Because yeah. normally our recordings will generally run for around two hours, sometimes less, depending on how tight the script is, sometimes more, depending on how dense the topic is or how rambly we just naturally happen to go. So anywhere from two to two and a half hours is probably on average how long a recording will go. But our recording for the Dune Part 1 movie deep dive episode, some of y'all might recall 
that three and a half hour monstrosity that we published, yeah. the actual raw tape of that was nearly six hours long. Yeah. We had to break up the recording session into two because we couldn't just sit down and record that long in one day. We had to do back to back recording days. So, of course, that's atypical. Of course, we had to give that movie all the special treatment and gamma bar nerdiness that it deserved. But in general, our recordings are around two hours. Yeah. But speaking of, hey, look, bullet point, step three, colon. God, I keep getting <laughs> emails. This is the worst. Uh, step three, colon. <laughs> so we send the raw audio, this two and a half hour, two hour, or in the case of the movie, six and a half hours of audio. Uh, we either edit it ourselves mm-hmm. or we send it to Jeff, depending on the type of episode, how long the edit is, how much time until the episode has to go live, things like that. Yep. And this, my God, is so much work. <laughs> so much work. And I and I, I really want to stress, this is the thing that yeah. I also wish more podcasts did this. We get rid of things like stumbles uh, when we misspeak or when we say something in a kind of a weird, confusing way. Right. We get rid of a lot of ums and buts and likes and things like that. Mm -hmm. We cut fact errors. If we, in the edit, hear something, we go, well, I don't know if that's true. We'll fact check ourselves in the moment. There's a lot of cutting unnecessary tangents. That's a big part of what takes something from two and a half hours of audio to one and a half hours. But I'm going to stress here, Mm -hmm. my goal when I'm editing is that you would not hear any of the edits. Right. It's all got to be invisible. It's got to be invisible because... What I want is for you to hear this tight, beautifully constructed conversation right. that is just impossible because... Humans just don't talk like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and sometimes the stuff we're talking about isn't even... It's the first time I've ever thought of this. I'm like, right. oh my God, wait, what if, uh, you know, this whole thing about history and, you know, when you're having those thoughts in that moment, you want to preserve the feeling of having that thought in that moment, but... It's, it's, God, it's so, it's a very delicate balance, (laughs) right? It's got to sound totally natural. Our goal is to never let any of you listeners ever know when and or where an edit ever happened in an episode, but trust us, hundreds of edits happen every single episode. Yeah. And I think the thing for me, that's always really cognizant when I'm editing is pacing and interest. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Is the pace still moving quickly are we continuing the conversation are things moving forward with everything that's said or are we circling the drain are we meandering have we gone in a weird offshoot that isn't making sense i'm very cognizant of that and that's something that i think again sets us apart there's you know of course a place for chat casts and casual sort of yeah totally live yeah. talk style shows we have chosen to just not be one of those we we want to create a very tight focused polished product with a beginning middle and end except it's still got to be fun and it's still gotta, gotta be fun, be fun. And loose yeah and, <laughs> and yeah. loose and all the other things we gotta walk that tight road oh, yeah good lord now here's where you wrote most edits take around six to eight hours yeah. plus an additional two to four hours for creating bonus clips and video content for social media and patreon yeah that's the bullet point uh-huh. hard disagree i am oh. a slower editor than you okay it takes me if i'm editing an episode Anywhere from, I would say, like, eight is on the low end hours to edit an episode. And I have edited an episode that's taken me as much as, like, 16 hours. Uh, Wow. I'm just slower. (laughs) I'm slower editing. That's okay. Um, I mean, I'm a bit more experienced than you. It's my actual real job to make podcasts. So, uh, And I I listen to us at, like, chipmunk speed. I I edit the episode at, like, 1.5 or 2x speed. What the hell? You do? Yeah. I just changed the playback speed, and I, I'm like listening to us. I like, <laughs> and, and making wow. really quick, 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 quick cuts. And then I go back and listen to it again at normal speed and just clean up those cuts. Wow. But the cuts are already made. Damn. That's... I might have to try that. I'm learning yeah. about this strategy right now. Oh, oh yeah? Hmm. I should oh. Maybe I should have told you this years ago. <laughs> <laughs> maybe as we approach the four-year mark... <laughs> You should stop fucking holding out on me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it certainly takes wow. some practice because it's very weird to hear yeah, yeah. yourself even talk at like 2x speed. But it all depends you know, how quick of an editor you are and how long the episode is. A longer episode will certainly take me longer than eight hours. Yeah. 
and legitimately like that's why we hired jeff because it was like it, it was the most yeah for me 15 hours of editing is time that i don't have to work on another script or like come up with a new idea or respond to totally emails, one of that. totally now after step three after tedious tedious step three of editing the episode is done it is ready for publish we get it uploaded we get it scheduled and it finally hits your headphones. Oh, dear we have listener. to make two versions as well. We have That's to like right. create a version that has an ad toss, one for Patreon, and one for public feed. But right, yeah, right. so once we have the two files ready, <laughs> <laughs> the two versions of each episode ready, one goes to Patreon, one goes to the public feed, and you finally get to hear it. And we uh, almost never get to celebrate that moment because the cycle begins again. Yeah. And usually not back at step one, because we do release episodes every week. And to keep up with that grind, we are often juggling multiple scripts and multiple edits and multiple drafts every single week. So we might have one episode that's like in final edit phase, we, while we have another script that's going through a second round of revision, while we're recording a third episode tomorrow. You know, we're always right. juggling all three of these steps every single week, all at the same time, basically. And so all in all, when you sort of add up those numbers, you math whizzes in the class might have already done the math here. But when you add all of that up, the show's production really does add up to more than a part-time job. It requires anywhere from 20 to 30 hours of work from us every single week to get these episodes across the finish line and into your lovely, lovely ears. So now that you know how we make each slig sausage... The many hours of labor and churning and meat and spices that go into it. Let's talk about numbers. Let's talk about the actual data of how the podcast does. Yeah. And first off, let's just say in 2023, we released 45 new episodes. Right. Which included a mixture of book clubs, uh, distrans news coverage was a new episode type i think yeah uh, we had spice morsel lore episodes as well as some collaborations with guests and then of course our typical full-on deep dive lore episodes mm -hmm. of those 45 episodes if you're curious the most popular ones included our two-part deep dive into the history of the Benny Gesserit. yeah another popular standout was our episode on lynch's 1984 <laughs> film a lot of you wanted that one <laughs> a lot of you wanted it, and it was fun to talk about. Yeah. And then our untangling of the messy Dune canon. Mm. Very good episode where we really set that battle standard in the in the soil. Yeah, I'm proud of that one. It's a good episode, and it's one that I think will probably continue to be useful as something to direct yeah. people to. It's one of those like used. reference episodes, you know, yeah. to like to understand this. Please listen to this first, sort of thing. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And then of course our ongoing book club series uh which continues to be a popular thing yeah that's right now speaking of popular you might be wondering how exactly do we know which episode is popular and which isn't the answer to that is based entirely on the number of downloads an episode gets and how many unique listeners tuned in to that episode downloaded and hit play on it and when you break these numbers down Gam Jabbar gets around 40,000 monthly downloads. Yeah. And those 40,000 downloads come from roughly 15,000 unique monthly listeners. And these are, frankly, numbers that we are both shocked by <laughs> and yeah. immensely proud of. Because yeah, they, they are numbers to write home about, you know? Write your mom a letter about. I've done it. Mom, <laughs> here, here, here's what my analytics looked like this month. Love you. Thanks for the cookies. Dear mother, after the dust has settled, I'm finally <laughs> able to collect my wits and ride upon the new month. I am exactly. happy to say the war front. That's right. I, I write my monthly Civil War General Gamjabar <laughs> yeah, updates yeah. to my mom, the yeah. missives. <laughs> now, I do want to put those numbers in context, right? Because they may sound big, and in many ways they are, right? 99% of podcasts don't get to this mark, independent podcasts, right? Uh, and I think in general, it's important to keep in mind, we're talking independent shows here. We're not associated with any larger company or network. We are an independent show that was grown from the ground up. And so 
these numbers might seem like, wow, that's so big. That's so many downloads. But to put that in context, this puts us squarely in the small but mighty category Mm, of independent podcasts out there. Yeah. A medium independent podcast, for example, will likely be getting well north of something like 50,000 downloads per month. And a large and sustainable independent show that probably has a staff that I'll get paid and is probably some of that staff's full-time job, that kind of show will easily, easily be crossing 100,000 downloads per month. And we'll talk about like what we want for 2024. We would love to be in those higher things, but it is hard with a small team to do that. And we can't because now it's time to talk about money. Yes. So to give you even more context, right? These numbers, they're lovely and celebration worthy in and of themselves. Mm, and 40,000 yeah. downloads a month is pretty wild. That's, That's wild. Yeah, I'm so proud of that. It's it's dope. But we would literally would not be able to do it if it didn't pay us some amount of money. So let's right. talk about it. Yeah. Now, Gam Jabbar brings in around $1,000 a month, Mm -hmm. which comes from four main sources, basically. Patreon, we get ad revenue on our public feed. We have uh, occasional sponsors. Right. And we have merchandise sales. Mm -hmm. Now, that revenue is used to pay uh, any bills that we have, like the hosting fees that we have for the store. We have to pay Jeff, of course, Mm -hmm. for his freelance editing. And then what is left over, uh, we split down the middle and we take home as compensation for the time that we put into the show. That's right. Did some quick math. The best of months, that means that you and I, Abu, I'm sorry to say, we're working right about minimum wage. (laughs) Oh, yeah? Best months, $8 an hour. Yeah. So Frankly, that's embarrassing for the federal government. (laughs) The federal government has decided (laughs) Gam Jabbar money is appropriate for people to live off of. Yeah. And Insane. we can personally tell you it's not. It's not. I <laughs> promise you. Yeah. I wanted to share this for two yeah. reasons. Yeah, First, yeah. I wanted to share that number and that context because it can be easy if you see and you hear us say, oh, our Patreon's doing much better than we expected. We expected it not to exist at all. Zero. So the fact that <laughs> <laughs> the fact that it's above zero is pretty fucking spectacular. <laughs> but when you ask when you hear us also then say, we're gonna aim to grow our Patreon, as we'll talk about in a bit. I want to make it clear, it's not because we're on Golden Thrones and we want our piles of rubies and gems and sapphires to be even bigger. Smoke. <laughs> I aspire to be Benedict Cumberbatch, <laughs> voicing Smaug crawling on the floor. <laughs> no, it is because we want to continue doing Gam Jabbar, and it is frankly hard to when it effectively works out to be like $8 an hour, 30 hours a week right. uh, is hard is hard to do. Right. On the best of months. At the best of months. Yeah. And many months, it's less than that. So I also say that because if you have ever been a patron supporter, you are making that number possible. And and we are so, so, so thankful for that. Yeah. And that a lot of that revenue is really used to like, frankly, keep the lights on and to pay people like Jeff when we need him to come edit stuff because we're drowning in work, you know, like the right. keeping the gears turning is a big factor in that too in addition to compensating ourselves for our time and effort as well. So uh, all of those things stem from the monthly revenue that Gam Jabbar can produce. And of course, we're grateful for where it is now, but we have ambitions for it to be bigger, better, stronger, and much more than it is. And in order to do that, we have to, we have to grow a lot of these numbers. Yeah. Speaking of which, let's talk goals. Let's talk yeah. 2024. Because we have basically two overarching, arching? I always am not sure. Overarching or overarching? Yeah. Yeah. How, how do we say that? Come to our podcast at gmail.com. <laughs> Please tell us. Tell us how to pronounce that Dune word. Like that's just a normal <laughs> English word. Overarching goal. We have goals. Two goals. Uh, <laughs> two yep. goals this year. <laughs> Learn how to say words is the third bonus goal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. If we hit these first two goals, bonus goal. Stretch goal. Yeah. Pronounce. Words. Learn words. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about big goal number one, Patreon, Patreon, Patreon. <laughs> yeah. It's as simple and as complicated as that. The vast, 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 vast majority of the show's monthly revenue, a massive part of that $1,000 per month that comes in, 
comes in from our patrons, many of whom have been with us for years now, ever since we launched that Patreon account. And we are so, so immensely grateful for this strong foundation. Yep. This is the foundation upon which Gamjabar continues to run. And so that's why this year, 2024, we want to be focusing a lot more on Patreon. We want to be focusing on growing it, sustaining it, nurturing it, and making sure our patrons are getting their money's worth, but that we're also attracting more and more patrons. Yeah. And it ultimately comes down to us wanting to post more types of content yeah. more often on yes. Patreon for our supporters. And a big part of that initially is going to be along this line of allowing patrons behind the curtain of the production a bit more often. A big part of that is going to be behind the scenes looks at our work with the hopes of inviting our supporters into the creative process when possible. So we're already spitballing ideas back and forth. We're thinking things like, Maybe we'll share our scripts, which we've never done in four years. Yeah. Those Google Docs sit on a private Gamjabar <laughs> Google Doc drive, yeah. and no one but us has ever seen them. Maybe we'll let our patrons know of upcoming big collaborations, which there are a couple coming up. Yeah. Maybe we'll let you all know about those ahead of time, and you can help us plan what to ask, what questions to um, Oh, that's get a good idea. With, with the guest. <laughs> oh, shit. We've also gotten some feedback from patrons saying they'd love to do things like vote on what spice morsels are in the next book club episode and yeah, i'm like yeah. damn i can outsource that y'all want to <laughs> just come up with spice morsels and send us send those our way yeah or and it has happened multiple times that we finish an episode it goes live and someone goes oh yeah and then i also noticed this and i'm like oh fuck god damn oh it. that would have been so good <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So sort of getting ahead of those scripts and maybe posting polls more often yeah. to help yeah, yeah. you help us build the next script. We also, in addition to all of those behind the scenes things, we also want to be hosting exclusive live stream discussions uh -huh. with our patrons. We did one of these at the end of 2023, just to sort of wrap up the year. We talked about that third very exciting Dune Part 2 trailer with yep. our patrons. And I think it was a lot of fun. We hung out for yeah. much longer than the allotted hour that we had given ourselves. In addition to these live streams that we want to be doing more often and these conversations that we want to be having more often, we also want to be inviting our patrons to sit in on live recording sessions of upcoming episodes. And I think the final point I'll make about Patreon is actually... Somewhat not Dune related at all, because the reality is, is our patrons and us as well, aren't just all about Dune all the time, just most of the time. Sure. Yeah. But we have other interests and many of our interests just happen to align with the, our wonderful little community on Patreon, particularly in the science fiction space. Uh, many of you over the years have written to us and messaged us in Discord and DM'd us wondering when we'll cover stuff like the Foundation series by yeah. Isaac Asimov or asking if we have watched or read The Expanse. Right. And the answer to a lot of those things is, yeah. I mean, like, we also have other interests. And uh, I, for one, am a huge science fiction fan. I love reading. I've shared that many times on the podcast before. But we've sort of been like, no, we we can't do that stuff. We got to stay the course. We're a Dune podcast and we can never be anything else. And while we will always be a Dune podcast and that will always be the main focus of everything we do, there is a world in which Patreons can ask us to maybe do a bonus off-topic episode about Foundation. Right. Because it's it's not Dune, but it is sci-fi. It shares many themes with Dune. Like we could get into all of those things and do an episode that isn't all about Dune and, and could potentially be a bit more off topic. So that's the sort of thing we plan on doing more of this year on Patreon as well. And all of that really is predicated on you telling us what you want. So we want that engagement. Answer those polls when we post them. Email us when we ask you what you'd want to hear from us or when we ask you about certain topics or questions. Send us those emails. Send us those messages on Discord. The more you talk to us, the better we can give you the more of what you want. Yeah, very true. And all with the ultimate goal of basically pumping those numbers up. You, you wrote in the script here, make Matthew McConaughey proud because we want to 
pump those numbers up. Right. What? <laughs> what is that a reference to? Is, isn't there that meme that's like Matthew McConaughey being like, you got to pump those numbers up. Is that a meme? Right. Hold on. Googling. Googling. Matthew McCon. That's how you spell his name, too. Pump those numbers up. I'd forget which movie it's from, right? Those are rookie numbers. From Wolf of Wall Street. That's oh. right. Oh, with, with the humming chest the, pounding. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. That's right. Okay, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, joke explained. So now, laugh. now that it's been explained, our second overarching goal, Archie, <laughs> fuck, our second goal... <laughs> Would make Matthew McConaughey proud hey! because boom, we want to pump those numbers up. Those are amateur numbers. Those are amateur numbers. That's, That's a right. reference I get immediately <laughs> because we want to grow our monthly downloads, our monthly download numbers. We want to grow the number of patrons that are supporting us on Patreon. We want to increase our revenue and we want partially, right, so that we're better compensated for our time, but also because we want to make more content like we want to make more dune content and we want to do it in a way that is more sustainable as well as we want to be able to pay people fairly if we right. grow this little team of ours that's right for example we tried out making tiktok videos and it was great it was very fun to make some and there were a couple mm -hmm. that did okay but we can't do that in a high quality consistent way without negatively impacting the other things that we're responsible for Right. Without basically having a video producer, like a yep. person who's there, just their whole job is going through the hours of raw video and audio and selecting those moments. So we'd love to bring someone on and do that, but we can only do that if we can afford to pay them. That's right. So anyway, growing those numbers is the goal and it's a challenge. It's naturally a challenge. It has been a challenge since day one, but it continues to be. Um, but we are focusing on that this year. We're focusing on collaborating with other creators in the Dune and larger sci-fi communities. Yeah, yeah. We're looking to book bigger guests, working with larger brands, more on that in another episode, and continuing to make the show just as good as it can be every single week. That's the goal. That's the goal. Yeah. Now, to wrap up what, what was supposed to be a short episode, but in classic Gamjabar fashion, <laughs> our jokes were just too funny and we couldn't cut them. It's okay. We'll cut it down to a tight six minutes. That's right. Perfect. Real tight. At, at 2x speed also. You have to listen at 2x speed. <laughs> if you listen to this episode at 2x speed, actually, it is shorter. So, True. You know. So we could keep a, going for another 30 minutes. Let, let's keep going. <laughs> yeah. Let's keep that rambling. That means we have twice as much time to talk. <laughs> perfect. No, no. To, to, to wrap up, this state of the this first ever state of the imperium for Gaon Jabbar, I do want to be very clear about two things because all of this that we've shared might be a little overwhelming and it might make some people worried like, oh my gosh, are things changing? Like, why are they talking about this all <laughs> yeah, of a sudden? Yeah. Is this not going to be the show that I've been listening to for years? I want to put some fears to rest here. First and foremost, everything we've shared doesn't mean this show is changing in any way. The free public feed of Gamjabar that has existed since 2020 will continue to exist in the same way. Listeners will always get our classic bread and butter lore deep dive episodes that we've always done. Listeners will continue to get our news coverage and Dune analysis all for free. That will all always exist on the public feed. The book club episodes also will continue to roll out first on the Patreon feed and then three months later on the public feed, as has been the case since we launched the Patreon. Right. The other thing I want to be super clear about is that none of this, none of the last four years happens without our amazing community of listeners and supporters. So we truly, deeply want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Yeah. I think I speak for both of us when I say that we never could have predicted where this show would have ended up four years ago in 2020 on that fateful, chilly February morning that I texted you. <laughs> yeah. We never could have predicted that this is where we'd be sitting here at the start of 2024. And it makes me so incredibly excited to see what the next four years will look like. Yeah. Where could we be in 2028? Under the sea, probably. But... <laughs> 
Where else could we be? Yeah, I'm glad you're putting fears to rest with your talk <laughs> of the rising oceans. Yeah, and I'll stress, you know, this is sort of kind of final call to action. You know, if you've supported us on Patreon before and you still do, thank you so much. Seriously. Thank you. Um, if things change for you and you aren't able to now, that's okay. Of course, it's okay. You can still support us by leaving a positive rating on uh, Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, as we say in the right. outro, but genuinely having those like five star ratings and a nice little comment, it's sweet. And it helps not only cheer us, lift our spirits, it also reflects well on the show to have that much engagement. Right. You can also always tell a friend or a family member the second movie's coming out. That's right. And there are going to be people talking about Dune. And if you walk out of the theater with a friend and they're like, fuck, that was so cool. You say Denny Villeneuve is making a third movie. Oh, I'm so excited. And you're like, do you like Dune now? And they're like, mm. yeah, I love Dune now. You can be like, cool. I've got this great podcast. Check out the, uh, I don't know, ECAS episode. Check out. Right, right. I was going to say, send them some spoiler free stuff. We've always been very careful on this show yeah. to be as accessible as possible, as nerdy and geeky as we can get. We've always made sure to create spoiler free, introductory, like easy level episodes for the Dune fan who just found out about it today. And so we, we hope those people listen as well. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, you can support us in so many ways. It is inexpressible, like how grateful we are for the support yeah. we've gotten so far. And because of the support we've gotten, we've been able to make this bigger than we ever thought it was going to be. And we want to keep that pattern going. So Absolutely. thank you in advance for everything you do for us. And we will continue to do everything we can for you and for Dune and for everything, everything in the, That's right. That's right. In the fandom. I'm excited for the year ahead and we'll be back to our regularly scheduled programming next week. Indeed we will. I don't remember this either. Well, friends, there is no real ending. It's just the place where we stop the recording. But this podcast is always one step beyond logic. So help spread the word of Mwadib and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And be sure to check out the other shows on the Lore Party Podcast Network on loreparty.com. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at lore underscore party. We're also on TikTok at Gomjabar Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. And remember, whoever controls the podcast controls the universe. We'll see you on the Golden Path.